One of the most contested bills, by the way, again, right in front of our faces, in Congress is the Farm Bill. And the Farm Bill is what assigns how much subsidies go to the agriculture industry. Continue watching to find out more. Vegan, like an angel with spreaded wings. Bienvenidos a Fables Espectadores. I just said, welcome, friendly viewers, in Spanish, the official language of Nicaragua. My name is Gabriel. The God-loving Nicaraguan people share your appreciation of God's creations and your goodwill towards humans, animals, and nature. Welcome to Vegan Bat Girl Connie Spence, Part 204, The Food System. In today's program, Connie walks us through the history of the food system and politics in the US, more specifically, how the system is rigged to undermine the law of supply and demand in favor of the livestock industry. After a highly successful foray into spotlighting her powerful vegan messages, Connie was energized and enthused about inspiring more people to choose the compassionate vegan diet by showing them how many animal lives are saved by the plant-based diet. I started checking the USDA numbers to see how many animals we saved because some of my messages on, with the Batman light would say each person can save 100 to 200 animals a year by not eating them. I would put those stats on a Batman light. So I wanted to find out, okay, now I'm meeting all these vegans. We're seeing all of these new plant-based companies becoming mainstream. We're seeing the economics of those plant-based companies doing really well. We're seeing headlines that the dairy industry is failing and that, or that we're perceiving it, that it's failing because there's bankruptcies left and right. We're seeing shelves at grocery stores. Doesn't matter if you're in a big market like LA, or if you're in a small, a really small rural area, you're seeing the shelves near the dairy milk have 20% to 50% of plant-based milks right next to it. So I'm thinking, okay, th these numbers should be shifting and changing. To her surprise, Connie found out that the livestock raising business had continued to expand, all the while raising and killing more animals. So I started looking at the USDA production numbers and I started comparing them with population increases. And what I found out is basically that the production keeps increasing. And I'm like, this can't be the case like every year. I start looking at losses and there are a lot of years with reported a lot of losses in money on headlines, but then sequentially you'll find a headline talking about a bailout. And I started finding out stockpile numbers, basically that we were stockpiling unsold meat and dairy and the amounts we were stockpiling were, were crazy. And if we have a stockpile because of oversupply the year before, then your expectation would be that next year that they're gonna reduce supply. And instead they increase supply. And I'm like, this just doesn't make sense. An industry couldn't do that if they were losing money. And I was like, where is this money coming from? And then those bailout articles started making sense. When Connie delved further into the details of the bailouts, she started learning about the truth behind the US food policy, about the farm bill, subsidies, bailouts, and more, which totally invalidates the fundamental rule of supply and demand in an economy. The livestock industry is part of the foundation of this country. The colonizer turned into the farmer, turned into the slave owner, turned back into the farmer the same practices used upon animals were used upon slaves. The food system was the part of the foundation of this country. Back then, the first four out of five presidents were farmers and nine, close to, you know, anywhere from 75 to 99 percent of people were farmers. A lot of things happened during Reconstruction. In the early 1900s, you start seeing farmers experiencing a lot of loss because of them actually degrading the soil. In 1933, or as a response to the Great Depression, FDR approved the Agriculture Act of 1933. And that now is what is considered the Farm Bill today. 
President Roosevelt sought to help farmers to boost crop production by implementing the New Deal, including the first Farm Bill, which was passed in 1933. It was a program that increased prices by paying farmers to limit their production, thereby essentially guaranteeing that they received a minimum wage for the crops they produced. In 1938, Congress established the program on a permanent basis to be renewed every five years. There have been 18 farm bills to date, the most recent being the Agriculture Improvement Act of 2018. The provisions in the bill will last until 2023, at which time a new farm bill will be negotiated. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Genesis, Holy Hebrew Bible. Attentive viewers, we'll be back after this short message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our program. The Farm Bill is regulated by the United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA, the federal executive department that is responsible for developing and executing federal laws related to farming, forestry, rural economic development, and food. The department aims to end hunger in the United States and internationally by meeting the needs of commercial farming and livestock food production, promoting agricultural trade, assuring food safety, protecting natural resources, and fostering rural communities. In the 1970s, when large corporations entered the agriculture business, the government made big cuts to the farm bill programs. Corporations became the primary price setters and have been paying farmers less and less for their crops. Big farms can make do with lower prices by scaling up their production, but not small farms like family farmers. Eventually, many small farms lost money and the owners sold their land and moved away, which was described precisely by the former United States Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue, in America. The big get bigger and the small go out. In 2019, small American farmers were nearing extinction. Most agribusinesses are controlled by large multinational corporations. While farmland stretch far and wide, farmers and ranchers themselves make up just 1.3% of the employed US population, a steep decline from 1935. Yet, they're still one of the strongest and most powerful industries in the United States. Today, the population of farmers is like 1 to 1.5 percent. So I need to figure out when the system was rigged to figure out how 1.5 percent of the population technically has control of the food system. One of the most contested bills, by the way, again right in front of our faces, in Congress is the Farm Bill. And the farm bill is what assigns how much subsidies go to the agriculture industry. It assigns new programs, programs that are safety nets, programs that bail them out, programs that are insurance policies. A subsidy is a financial benefit from a government that gives the advantage to a specific industry or business funded by our tax dollars. A bailout is the injection of money into a business or organization that would otherwise face imminent collapse, again funded by our tax dollars. Furthermore, some components within the Farm Bill are particularly shocking, such as the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, formerly food stamps. 80% or more of Farm Bill expenditures go for SNAP, paying people only when they consume animal products. So the Farm Bill, the SNAP program specifically, is actually a false sense of demand for livestock because the SNAP program, for the most part, only is only allowed at certain stores and only allowed on certain products. And a lot of those products are meat and dairy focused. And so one of the things that we can talk about later is food accessibility and our organization trying to expand the SNAP program to be more inclusive. 
of vegan products. I mean, the food system is rigged. So basically what happens is I know when we're speaking to our vegan audience and as vegans, we're doing activism and we're talking to non-vegans, we talk a lot about our consumer dollar voting and we talk a lot about supply and demand. But the sad truth is, is that, that our tax dollars bailing them out is in direct competition with your consumer dollars. Yeah, this is a great segue to like where this activism changed course. And I realized that I can't just focus on consumer behavior because the farm bill is a great example of a bill that undermines our veganism because it helps and supports so drastically with our taxes, the agriculture system, uh, not the agriculture system specifically livestock and, and dairy. I mean, it must change the way our taxes are being used. It's thievery in my opinion. I am so consciously making sure that my shoes aren't leather, my purses aren't leather, that nothing on me or in my house exploits an animal. But then your taxes are taken out 20 to 40% of them every year and it's going to do the opposite of what your intention was. And all those animals you thought you were saving, they're just saying, hey, we have your taxes, so. What can you do? We have to create a channel of communication to politicians. We have to make our demands and we have to hold them accountable. And we can't do that by holding a sign outside. Activism augments our lobbying demands. Indeed, we need to hold the politicians accountable for a sustainable food system that puts the most basic human moral values above greed for profits. We thank the beautiful and compassionate Connie Spence for her inspirational activism. Join us again next Thursday, November 4th on Vegan Bad Girl, Connie Spence, part 3 of 4. To learn about Connie Spence's lobbying work via her organization, Vegan Justice League, Liberation 360. We salute your efforts and wish for governments to soon implement fair policies in agriculture. To find out more about Connie Spence, please visit Instagram, instagram.com slash vegan underscore bad girl, website agriculturefairnessalliance.org, liberation360.org, veganjusticeleague.com. Vegan, let's prove that we are humane. Compassionate viewers, thank you for your company today. Coming up next is The True Jihad, part 13 or 14, on Between Master and Disciples, right after Noteworthy News. May your days be filled with God's loving embrace. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash VEG.